Hello, and welcome to Home Space and Reason, a podcast about creating a home that thrives. Hi there, I'm Christina Browning, your host. If you know your home could be so much more than it is, I discuss home functionality, aesthetics, and automation. I'm the home functionality coach and realtor. I geek out on various subjects regarding your home and yard, challenging you to think of your space differently to get the most out of every square foot. I pose questions for you to think through about your space and your reason. This podcast is all positive, offering you virtual fist bumps and celebrating every win. Remember, there's no such thing as perfect, but you can still aim for your best every day. In this episode, let's talk about emotions as it pertains to our home. And let's talk about home functionality and aesthetics. Episode 19. Hey, thanks for joining me today to create a home that thrives. We are all humans filled with glorious emotions of all sorts. These emotions are what we experience every single day, whether we like it or not. Our homes are where our basic emotions reside, where our life happens. I want to approach this topic of emotions in your home via three different angles, via the emotions which the home imbues, how it makes you feel through the ambiance you have created, and through the emotional attachment to it due to the memories had within it, and the emotions that happen as a result of the sale of a home. Now let's have some fun. Identify what, if any, parts of your home pop into your mind when I say some words. Are you ready? Here we go. Luxurious. Frustrating. Safe. Comforting. Ugly, soft, something I avoid, my favorite. Now let's look back on those that are negative. The words that I listed that were negative and the areas that came to mind, what stands out to you? Are there any surprises? Eric Jaff wrote an article for City Lab titled Charting the Emotions of Every Room in the House that I want to share with you. It reads in part, A research trio led by psychologist Lindsey Graham of the University of Texas at Austin gave 200 people a list of 18 possible rooms in an ideal home and then asked them to pick two ambiance descriptions that fit the room the best. The exact question was, as you enter each of the following spaces, what are most important emotions or perceptions you would like to evoke within yourself and others. Participants could choose from a prepared list of 29 words or write in their own. The results were surprisingly uniform. Graham and collaborators reported that on average, the top five ambiances for each room accounted for about two-thirds of the total description. This generally strong consensus suggests both that people do have a sense about which ambiances they desire in each room and that these ambiance and room preferences are shared by others in the sample. The researchers also made a fabulous and colorful infographic of the responses that I'll post on our Facebook group page called Home Space and Reason. Be sure to join and participate if you haven't already. One of the rooms generating the most agreement was, indeed, the master closet. More than half of the respondents used the word 
organization to describe it, followed by abundance and privacy. The term sophistication also made the top five. People shared similar feelings about the entryway, the front porch, and the guest room. Inviting was by far the top ambiance for each. The word organization emerged as the clear frontrunner for the garage and the utility room. Other predictable responses included the study with its image of quiet and productivity, the media room, which holds an entertaining air, and the dining room, which conjures feelings of family and togetherness. The master bedroom was described most commonly by its sense of romance. Somewhat strangely, the only other room in the house to evoke that response in its top five was the master bathroom. I find this sort of data so interesting. If you look at the results in pie charts, you can see how it steps you outside of the weeds, giving you a bigger, more broad approach to each room and the feelings you might want there. What would your pie chart look like? Let's make one for ourselves. I've added this exact exercise to the group page for you to geek out on with me. As a realtor, my job is to sell your home for the best and highest price possible and get you into the next home that speaks to the next chapter of your life. But as a home functionality coach, my job is to come and analyze what's most important to you and help you align your home to those values, your passions, so that your home supports you. It kind of like hugs you as a shelter and a haven for you instead of a source of stress, anxiety, and daily rub. Have you subscribed yet? Make sure you do so the episodes come to you automatically. Yay for automation. I want you to close your eyes Think back to your own childhood or early years. I want you to identify what memory pops into your head as I list some concepts. Ready? What was the time when you had the most fun in nature, in the woods or camping? Splashing in puddles? What was the weather like? Who was there with you? What can you smell? Was it cold or balmy or especially rainy? Besides fun, what other emotions filled you in this experience? give you one more scenario. Remember your childhood home and the relics from this much different time. Children notice details that adults often rush by. What details stand out to you specifically about the space you lived in? What was the wallpaper like if there was wallpaper? Do you remember a wall-mounted rotary phone? What color was it? Do you remember the rug? Do you remember the colors that surrounded you? Who was there with you? What was your most favorite time of year in this space that you have in your mind? Some of us only have small windows of memories into this time. Some of us may have jumped from home to home as a youngster in the military or with parents that otherwise moved often. So your memories may be of things that were consistent between all the places. Like what went with you? Do you remember your suitcase? Walk through that main floor slowly and look up and look down. Do you have on shoes, socks, or are you barefoot as you walk through this house in your head? When you were most excited, what would you do in this space? 
I remember when my mother gave me permission to spend the night at a friend's house, I'd run up the stairs as fast as I could and slide down the wood floor hallway in my socks, seeing how far I could go. What sounds do you hear? Was the baseball game always on? Or did music permeate your house? Individuals who reach the end of their lives feeling fulfilled, grateful, and without regrets get there by being intentional with how they handled their time. Add natural items into your space like wood, leather, plants, and stone because natural elements calm you. They help your tensions dissipate quicker. Your goal is to focus on the things that count. The quality in life, the joy, and the unexpected. And now it's time for questions to ask yourself about your home space and your reason. Question number one. How will your life be different in a year? Think about what's not working in your life right now, whether it's a self-destructive habit, too many unfinished projects, loneliness, or anything else. Since it takes 28 days to change an ingrained behavior, decide to invest the next 30 days in making a change in your home and habits to address the main item on your list. How fast did the past 12 months go by? Probably so fast. I swear the older I get, the faster time goes. Before you know it, a year will have passed, so chunk it back into bits so that when next year hits, your life will be intentionally and considerably different. You control so much of your life. A sense of accomplishment is important. Reward yourself for your hard work by treating yourself to something you typically haven't planned ahead enough to have. Again, we're projecting one year. What do you want by then? Maybe your back patio closed in so you can enjoy it year-round. If so, have you started saving for it? Have you started getting bids? Since construction always takes longer than anticipated, when do you want it done by? Pad that time to allow for more. If you want to enjoy it this summer, aim to have it completed a month earlier. Set yourself up to succeed by setting your goal and working backward, chunking it down. What do you need to have done and by when? And then add that to your calendar so it happens. Question two, what are you grateful for? We know that gratitude correlates with better mood and sleep, higher confidence, and lower fatigue. I am thankful for electricity, for running water, and this roof over my head. Question 3. What can you tweak within the walls of your home or in your yard to invest in your relationships. Love is the key to happiness. Even if a man succeeded in work, amassed piles of money, and experienced good health, without loving relationships, he wouldn't be happy. Gather more. Look at the people you love and speak to them. Have experiences with them without devices in your hands. Plan family game nights or cook nights. Have your mother over for tea. Ask your neighbor's advice on her award-winning peach cobbler. Or ask your brother over for a private tutorial on the Traeger. Connect, connect, connect. Question 4. What do you do for fun? If you have to think about this one, you are officially in trouble with me. What you focus on grows, so make sure you intentionally incorporate fun into your days, your weeks, and therefore your life. 
On your deathbed, you'll never say, I wish I would have worked more or I wish I would have watched more TV. Go find your thing, your fun thing. Start with things that strike a chord on your insides, even if you don't currently identify as someone who would do that. For example, I have crappy handwriting and I was horrible in art class, but if those calligraphy videos on Instagram really turn your crank, try it for crying out loud. Take an e-course. Do something, anything to move in that direction. Question five, I want you to find and list your healthy vices, your meditation, your baking, your painting therapy. When you're not feeling like you can tackle projects, what do you turn to? Get yourself back in line when you're feeling off with these healthy vices and then set yourself up for your next home project, the thing that's going to make the next biggest impact in your life by tweaking your home. There are essentially two spaces you operate from, recovery and forward motion. When you are in recovery mode, whether it's physical or mental, does your home support it? What's the next best thing that would drastically improve your mental and physical recovery in your home? Question six. Do you have a house-centric dream list, a vision board of sorts? If you don't, start one. Intentions are powerful. A Pinterest board just meant for things you'd like to see manifested in your own home can be important. Think about the platforms you use now and where this could live. It doesn't have to be Pinterest. Start making it. They work. When you can visualize the things that light you up, somehow it helps to make the path clearer in how to make them happen. I found a vision book I made for myself probably 15 years ago because it was a folder type book. It blended in on my bookshelf. When I pulled it out after we had built our home, it caught my breath because I saw an accordion glass sliding door where the whole wall essentially slides open. I had pinned this before Pinterest was a thing. I had tore it out of a magazine and I had stuck it in a binder so many years ago. And now I was living in a home with a beautiful wall of windows that slid open to let the air in. My cup overflows telling this story because it's the absolute truth without any embellishment. Put your dreams for your home on paper or in a book or in an app or in a box or on the wall. Just don't put it on the fridge. Have I told you how much that clutter can ruin your kitchen? Who told anyone it's okay to stick as many pieces of random paper to the outside of your fridge as you can fit? How did this become a thing? Just removing everything from the outside of your fridge is progress. Apparently, the first refrigerator magnet patent was obtained by William Zimmerman of St. Louis, Missouri in the early 1970s. He patented the idea of small colored cartoon magnets to be used for the decorative display and convenience of stuff. Darn it, Bill. Hundreds of thousands of kitchens are more cluttered because of you. Remember that your external world is a reflection of your internal world. So be careful of your thoughts. Keep them positive. Keep your space as tidy as you can and choose to thrive with intentional thinking. Choose to do what it takes to get to a place where your home just rocks in function, in aesthetics, and in comfort. Let's set our homes up so they are spaces for feeling grounded, secure, and relaxed so that when crises come, we have the space to recover, to heal, 
to feel safe and the ability to look up and see the opportunity ahead. Panic sucks. So let's set ourselves up to avoid panic when possible. Just like buying insurance, you don't want to wait until you're in dire straits and you'd wished you'd just followed through and finished the project you'd started. The only thing that is stopping you is what? You will only get done what you make time for. If you want it to happen, it will. When it doesn't, you've come up with excuses. Seriously, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, but your home is the framework for your life. If you don't make it a priority, it's really hard for it to be the sanctuary and well-oiled machine that you know it can be. What if you suddenly needed knee surgery and couldn't be mobile for six weeks? This literally just happened to my neighbor. Is your home set up to handle crises? Tackle one project. One project a week in bite-sized pieces and hold yourself accountable. I'm serious. When I feel especially stuck in negative thought patterns, I turn to one of my healthy devices. I listen to my favorite audiobook by Jen Sincero until I get my mindset right. I watch something positive on television. I go to the gym. I know me enough now after much introspection to start identifying when I'm falling out of step and heading toward the best I can be. And this is when I am in recovery mode. John F. Kennedy said, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents opportunity. Now let's talk briefly about selling a home with an emotional attachment. Buying or selling a home at its most basic level is an exchange of money for a product. It happens to be a product associated with hopes and dreams, memories and experiences, all rooted in that physical space called your home. As a realtor, I understand that a house is not just for walls that provide shelter, homes, the buying and selling of them, but the living in them part two, it's my business. I write this podcast. We talk about emotions. I consult on spaces to make them more satisfying. For the love of sunshine, if anyone understands the roots of attachment to a home, it is me. So I also take a delicate approach to the staging of it, to the selling of it paying respect to the memories that occurred there and helping the seller focus on the forward motion and exciting expectations of the next chapter. If you live here, I would be honored to help you transition into your next home. Jen A. Miller wrote an article appearing in the New York Times titled, When a House is So Much More, Why Do Some People Get So Emotional About Real Estate? It reads in part, researchers have studied how a physical space can be tied to memory and consequently be imbued with significant value beyond anything monetary. Dr. Hudel's field is in neuroeconomics, which uses information about our biology and brains to better understand decision making, especially when it comes to finances. His research has shown that the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, a region at the base of the frontal lobe of the brain, is involved with not just emotion, but also reward, motivation, and value. We have memories and associations that are connected to all of those things that make houses so heavily connected to ourselves. That might make the place where you grew up or brought your children home from the hospital feel invaluable and hard to part with, even though it's ultimately just a physical thing with a price tag attached. This is wonderful insight. Let's say your mother homeschooled you and your siblings in this very living room. It's important to think of that experience as a gift of a passion for learning from your mother to you and separate the space as a part of that equation in order to move on and sell. 
Maybe your mother was a professional playwright who also enjoyed creating plays on the front porch with you kids. That porch tugs at your heartstrings with those memories. I understand that. Shirley Ann Jackson is a physicist and the 18th president of the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. She's the first African-American woman to have earned a doctorate at MIT, and her love of science began with bumblebees that she collected as a young girl that flew all over the flowers in her backyard. If this is your story, one might imagine that it could possibly be difficult to part with this land. When the very beginning of the discovery of this light within yourself started here, in these flowers, in this yard. Or, you could carry this fond memory forward and plant yourself a flower garden in your next home, even more dreamy to evoke all the emotions you want to keep sacred, while still being able to part with the physical land and home itself. Once you get to a place that you intimately feel the best way to honor the home is for it to be lived in and loved by the next owner, the description of the home can be imbued with that care and its qualities emphasized such as garden and greenhouse to fulfill every gardening dream you've ever hoped for. When your home really reflects you and your love for gardening, there's a good chance the next homeowner will also have this passion if it's what sets your home apart from others. I often recommend staging these assets, adding fresh herbs, vegetables, and a trowel so people looking at it can ultimately visualize themselves there in that space and loving the produce that the garden yields. If you want your home to be sold with care and you live in the greater metro Portland, Oregon area, give me a holler. I'd be happy to talk with you about your goals, feelings, and getting your home sold. Connect with me by clicking on the link in the podcast notes. If you've listened to my podcast, you know I sometimes remind you about home maintenance. Do you have vinegar? Do you have an ice cube tray? The stinkiest part of the kitchen can easily be the sink disposal. The best all-around solution is to make vinegar ice cubes. Put some vinegar in an ice cube tray and let it freeze, and then run the cubes through the disposal. At the same time, try surface cleaning the fridge with the same white vinegar. Wipe up spills with a 50-50 vinegar water mix. You can even keep a bottle of the mixture stored in the fridge. Lastly, clean microwave stains by placing a half cup of that same vinegar, half cup of water, in a glass bowl. Microwave it two to three minutes or until it boils, and then wipe up the microwave with little to no elbow grease. Done and done. Hey you, my favorite listener, you have permission to re-listen to any of these podcasts again, especially if you're listening in your car or elsewhere in the world, because sometimes it helps if you're in the space that we're discussing. I listen to my favorite audiobooks over and over again, it's no different. Sometimes things just resonate, and those voices and their messages are what I need to hear over and over I'd love to hear from you. Send me an email at Christina with a K at spaceandreason.com. Of course, if you live in Oregon, you can hire me to sell your home. We'll make it as attractive as it can be for potential buyers. That is what I do. Let's get you top dollar for your investment and talk about your dreams for what's next. Again, my email is Christina with a K at spaceandreason.com. If you're on social media, follow me at Space and Reason on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest. Have you given this podcast a review yet? How about now? 